Hegel, like his name, is known for writing long, lengthy, intellectualized jargon books on philosophy, culture, and history. So that is why I'm here to rescue you from the abyss and briefly introduce the book. The essence of this book essentially has to do with freedoms and recognition. It has to do with right. To Hegel, right, or the German Recht, essentially means three things. Obligations, entitlements, and perhaps most importantly, freedom. But this raises the question, what is freedom to Hegel? It is important to contextualize Hegel's conception of freedom with perhaps two competing definitions. Hegel's historical significance is important here as he is living and writing during the culmination of the Enlightenment. Everyone from Rousseau and Hobbes to Napoleon and Friedrich the Great of Prussia play a historical significance in the time that Hegel is living. And freedom, if anything, was the central idea of the Enlightenment. Freedom from false dogmas, freedom from the church, freedom from prejudices of old, freedoms from monarchs, and any false authority. One of the first ways to view freedom is as an abstraction. Under this conception, freedom is the ability to do whatever one pleases as long as there are no external forces preventing one from doing it. And likewise, one is also free to do whatever they please as long as it doesn't infringe on others. This idea of freedom is the main triumph of classical liberalism and libertarian philosophy, but perhaps is best explained in the philosophy of David Hume, who suggests that freedom is uncritically accepting external influences. Hegel outright rejects this idea of freedom though, as it is purely negative. See, it doesn't really tell us what we shouldn't do with our freedom. The second way to understand freedom is by thinking of it as an individual's autonomy. This conception suggests that we are free when we can self-rule. We can act on principles and originate from one's own reason. This is perhaps best articulated by the philosopher Immanuel Kant, who thinks that one is free when they are free to do something absent of external influences and rather do it because it is moral and imperative they do so. The problem with Kant's conception of freedom, however, is that it is also purely negative. It doesn't tell us what we should do, and likewise, it alienates us from our historical significance and the world around us. Hegel, in contrast, doesn't want us to be a slave to our influences, but he doesn't want us to try and escape them either. Rather, we have to first reconcile ourselves to our influences. Freedom is defined by Hegel as the recognition of oneself in a greater context. One's freedom is therefore bound up in the world around them, in their society, and their civic duty. Therefore, one is free when they reach a self-recognition. This basically means that they are fulfilling their social obligations and are mutually recognized for it by those around them. Humans to Hegel are historic beings. We are not isolated individuals destined to be emancipated from society or its obligations. Rather, one is only free when they recognize and come into their greater significance. From this conception of freedom, we can reason the existence of a tapestry of different personal, cultural, and political pursuits. Take this state for example. To Hegel, the state is legitimate because it is the synthesis of one's ethical freedoms. Man is immediately part of a family which has its own norms and its authorities. It's a personal desire and a private conviction. This is then followed by civil society, where man partakes in obligations and norms with other men like him. Things like you have to wear shoes to the store or not drink and drive. Things of that nature. And finally, the state is the whole of society. It resolves any conflicts or alienation man would feel in partaking in civil society. The state is both the free individual and the collection of free individuals. The state helps man recognize their obligations to others and their role in the whole of society. With the idea and legitimization of the state, Hegel essentially is saying that the right is the synthesis of an individual acting in accordance with both his personal will and the will of society as a whole. The state therefore creates a social harmony. Finally, Hegel rejects his previous positive comments about the French Revolution and instead presents a better, more idealized form of government. That form of government to Hegel is an ideal form of constitutional monarchy, 
where the sovereign of the state maintains a supreme power. So with this in mind, do with that as you will, and now you can either decide to become a monarch, or watch a Slavoj Žižek video knowing what he means by words like Hegelian dialectic.